All right, I still can't submit this just with a PDF, so I'm going to just do a quick voiceover um, and maybe redo it this weekend, pointing out just a few things. Um, first of all, number one question, fractions really are okay. Just because you get a fraction does not mean that you got a wrong answer, like this one right here and this one right here. Um, definitely double check yourself. Plug it back in with equations. You should be t plugging your numbers back in to make sure that it works. So for example here, if you did 5 times 21 fifths, you'd come up with 21 minus 3 is 18. So double check yourself. Basically, this is all about inverse operations. If it's added like here, you subtract. If it's subtracted, you add. If it's multiplied, you divide, etc., etc. A couple of exceptions. Right here, you need to make sure you're doing the distributive property. If when you use the distributive property you don't get rid of the fraction, make sure that you use multiplying by the reciprocal to get rid of it. Um, if there are variables on both sides, make sure you get one, rid of one of them. And then 8 was a little tricky. We did this when we did similar triangles. You had to cross multiply to solve. 9 is different as well because this is about um, literal equations. So that part of that unit where you had to solve for y using inverse operations. Don't get freaked out about the application problems. You guys have this. We've practiced this with equations and inequalities. So here you're given the expression for the length and the width and the perimeter. So you know 2 times the length plus 2 times the width equals the perimeter. So just think through it and don't freak out because you have to write an equation. So you had to solve for x and then plug that 5 back into both of these expressions to get the length and the width. 11, this is a straight up. Your beginning cost was the cost of the hot chocolate. You bought three, three donuts. You were trying to figure out the dollar amounts. You're writing that equation. These are much easier than what we had during the unit. All right, the translating and solving, twice the amount, twice the number, and 15 is the same as two less than the number. So you're writing that equation just like it says, and then you're solving to get the variable answer. I'm not going to spend too much time on inequality since you just took the summative today, but it's the same type of thing. You're using inverse operations to solve. Remember, if you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number, such as here, you're reversing the symbols. Um, if it's an or, keep it an or with that or in the middle, and the arrows go apart. If it's an and, keep it together with the arrows connecting. The assessment is in three parts. That was the solving part. Now starting graphing. Graphing was primarily in chapter 4, so make sure you go back and look at that stuff in chapter 4. Uh, it is the easiest to graph in slope-intercept form. So the y-intercept tells us our starting point on the y-axis, and the slope tells us our driving directions, how you have to get from one point to the next. Remember, it is rise over run. If it is not in slope-intercept form. Again, the easiest thing to do is solve for y to put it in slope-intercept form. Don't remember, if, don't remember, don't forget if the slope is going positive, it's going to be going uphill. If it is negative, it is going to be going downhill. An x equals equation is a vertical line going through the x-axis. A y equals is a horizontal line going through the y-axis. And absolute value equations in two variables start you have to start graphing by finding that vertex so it was the opposite of whatever is in here or you put this equal to zero and solve for x to get the x coordinate and then this is the y coordinate and it is v-shaped make sure you go back and look at your notes and watch the videos on this if you don't remember this and the third part is writing equations very similar to graphing. This was primarily chapter 4 and 5 where you need the slope and the y-intercept to write the equation. So you find the slope and again it is how you are going down and over or up and back in this case. It is a negative slope because it is going downhill. So you had to go down 2 over 1 to get to the next point. So the slope was negative 2. Y-intercept it crossed at should be a negative 2. So
So this is the equation. Remember the slope of a vertical line is undefined and x equals is undefined slope and it does not cross the y-axis. Where the slope, if it is a Ver if it is a horizontal line, the slope would be zero, and there would be a y-intercept. Four confused a lot of people because I did not label the axes, and I apologize for that. So if this was the x-axis, this was the y-axis, so you were writing the equation for this line. So first you needed to find the slope, so rise over run, three over two, and then I just chose this point. You could certainly work backwards, but it's not as accurate as just choosing a point and then putting it in point slope form and then solving for y. So this was the equation. And writing equations from a slope and a point or two points, we just finished this. Some of you just did the retake this week on this where you know that there are a couple different ways to do it. My preferred way is putting it in point slope form. So y minus y sub one equals the slope times x minus x sub one and then doing the distributive property and solving for y. So it does not say so in the directions, but when I ask you to write an equation, I'm really asking you to write it in slope-intercept form. So some of you left it like this in point-slope form on your review. I want you to take it all the way to slope-intercept form. 7, 8, 9 are a little bit different, a little bit more work because you needed to find the slope first. Please remember to find the slope. You're doing y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Some of you are still reversing that and putting the x in the numerator, y in the denominator. It is rise over run. And then again, my preferred way is putting it into point slope form. You certainly, and I'll do it up here, you certainly could have plugged y in and x into y, the y slope intercept form. So 13 equals. 2 times 5 plus b and then solved for b and plugged it back in. But this allows me to get the equation without having to do too much work. Alright, and lastly these application problems. Um, here a couple of you asked about that. It didn't make much sense for the answer to be two points per minute. But you're given two separate data points and you're finding the slope. The reason it doesn't make sense is if you do 3 times 2, you don't get 12. But remember, this is the average. So it really is 2 points per minute, the average. All right, 11A, at 4 weeks, my puppy Molly, I should have said Josie, weighed 48 ounces. So here is a data point, 4 weeks, 48 ounces. She's gaining weight at a rate of 8 ounces per week. So that is my slope. So again, it's the same old, same old y minus y sub 1 equals the slope times x minus x sub 1 and then you solve for y. So here's the equation and then I can plug 14 in for the number of weeks, simplify to get her weight at 14 weeks. Alright, sorry that this was the voiceover. I will try to get just the regular PDF with the answers in Blackboard as well, but hope this helps for tonight.